Hello, it's Mr. Obi from GCSE Physics Explained. I'm going to explain about vector diagrams by using free body diagrams and scale drawings. All forces are vector quantities. A vector has both size and direction. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. We represent a force by drawing an arrow. The length of the arrow represents the size of the force. A small force has a short arrow. A large force has a long arrow. The direction of the arrow represents the direction of the force. Every object can have more than one force acting on it. To resolve the forces and work out what is going to happen to an object, people like scientists, engineers, pilots and architects use free body diagrams. A free body diagram is just an object with arrows coming out of it. Each force is drawn to scale by using a ruler to get the size right and a protractor to get the direction right. Here are some free body diagram examples. Just see there's a football and two people kick it at exactly the same time. One person kicks it due east with a force of 60 newtons and one person kicks it due north with a force of 80 newtons. To work out the net force and which direction the ball will travel, we must use a scale. Because of the size of these particular forces, I'll choose a scale of 1 cm equals 10 newtons. First, I'll draw the force going due east. The force is 60 newtons, so on a scale of 1 cm equals 10 newtons, I need to draw a line 6 cm long. Next, I'll draw the 80 newton force, which will be 8 cm long using the same scale. And that will point due north, so we'll go straight up on the page. We now need to use what we call the tip to tail addition of vectors rule. We call the end of the vector where the arrow head is the tip, and we call the other end of the vector the tail. Just like an arrow, you'd fire with a bow. We take the tail of one vector arrow and add it to the tip of the other vector arrow. It doesn't matter which vector you place first in the chain, the resultant or net force will be the same. This ends up drawing a parallelogram, which is called a parallelogram of forces. You can use a parallelogram of forces to work out the net force, but I personally think the tip to tail addition of vectors is easier. Once you have your vectors lined up, tip to tail, you simply need to draw another arrow from the start of the first arrow to the end of the last arrow. This new arrow is the net force or resultant force. This can also be referred to as a scale diagram. Because it's a scale diagram, all you need to do to find out the size of this resultant force is to measure it with your ruler. In this example, we used a scale of 1 cm equals 10 newtons. So this arrow is 10 cm long, so that means 100 newtons. To find the direction, we use our protractor. You can quote the direction as an angle against the vertical. In this example, that would be 36 degrees. Or you can quote the angle against the horizontal. In this example, that would be 54 degrees. Here's another example. Velocity is also a vector. It has size and direction. So we can use vector diagrams to work out resultant velocities. Examiners often draw these questions on graph paper for you to complete. Here's a boat travelling at 12 meters per second in this direction. And here's a current in the water travelling at 4 meters per second in this direction. We'll use a scale of 1 cm equals 1 meter per second. To work out the resultant, or net velocity, we'll use the tip to tail addition of vectors. Because it's on graph paper this time, that makes it slightly easier because we can use the grid lines to help us. We can see the 4 meter per second vector travels 3.5 boxes to the left and two boxes downward. So we can just use that as a rough guide to redraw this vector at the tip of the other vector. One, two, three and a half boxes to the left. One, two boxes down. We'll connect that up. So this vector here should be exactly the same as this vector here. 
The examiners always give a small range of answers that they will accept. So if we don't get it absolutely spot on, as long as we show our working out, they can see we understand the technique and we'll get full marks. Draw the resultant vector from the tail of the first arrow to the tip of the second arrow. Using my ruler, I can see the resultant vector is eight centimeters long. It's a scale of one centimeter equals one meter per second. So eight centimeters long means a velocity of eight meters per second. Using my protractor, I can see the direction is 18 degrees to the vertical or 72 degrees to the horizontal. The examiner might ask for you to quote how many degrees to either the vertical or the horizontal. Here's a trickier example. The examiner will give you the resultant vector and will ask you to work out the component of this vector. This just means draw two vectors, tip the tail, that would equal the resultant vector. Here's the question. Work out the normal force and the force pulling the car down the slope. First, label the resultant force. Second, draw a dashed line at 90 degrees to the ground surface where the resultant force touches the surface. This is where our normal force will be, but we don't know how long it will be just yet. Thirdly, draw a line parallel to the dashed line that starts at the ground surface and stops at the tip of the weight arrow. This is one of the components we need. We'll call this vector one. It is seven centimeters. Our scale is one centimeter equals 100 newtons. So that's 70 newtons. Next, draw a line parallel to the ground surface that starts at the dashed line and stops at the tip of the weird arrow. Call this vector two. Vector two is three centimeters. So on our scale of one centimeter equals 100 newtons, that is 30 newtons. If we were to add the tail of vector two to the tip of vector one, then that would equal the resultant because the components start and end at the same place as the resultant. By the way, vector one would be the same size as the normal force, but opposite in direction, Newton's third law, and vector two would be the size of the force pulling the car down the hill. At A-level physics, you'd learn how to use trigonometry and Pythagoras' theorem to work out the angles and sizes, but at GCSE level, scale diagrams are the only requirement. And that's how to take care of vector diagrams. Hope it's been helpful and you've learned something. Bye for now.